As of the recording of this video, you can trade $17 of your Federal Reserve paper for one ounce of silver. Historically speaking, the destiny for all fiat currency is zero. It ends up losing 100% of its value. This means that if you haven't exchanged your future worthless paper for sound money like gold and silver, you will literally lose everything you've worked to accumulate if it's parked in worthless paper notes. And the clock is ticking as people around the world are losing confidence in the world's reserve currency. If you don't own precious metals or understand how inflation is eating away at the dollars you've saved up, click on the link in the description for a free inflation ebook or call the guys at Noble Gold. Tell them High Impact Flick sent you and they'll take care of you. You guys enjoy, like, and share this video. What you're about to see is graphic and shocking. It may even make some of you physically sick to watch, but there's an urgent point that needs to be made while there's still time to make it. In fact, if you see the urgency, like and share this video with everybody you know, especially with those in the military and law enforcement. This is a perspective altering and life changing video. It's my hope that as cringe worthy as these examples you're about to see are, you'll be able to work your way through them so you can fully appreciate the main point. Are you ready? Here we go. Yes, this is, I think, way beyond his ability. Really unwise for him to take it. Let's watch Paul Jordan. Again, this will be a world record. Oh! Oh, oh his, his leg, his, oh. his less left leg dislocated, it looked. Not for me where he first gets yes, As he goes down, it, it's hard to see what we're watching. It looks like the right leg gives, but then the left leg, and then you can see him rolling over on his right ankle. Oh. My goodness, he just oh. totaled, his, totaled himself. My bet is that most of you cringed when you saw these. Why? Maybe it's because these videos disturbed your comfortable reality with horrific real life examples of something traumatic and life changing that could happen to anyone in that particular circumstance. And I would say that a dramatic and immediate response to this kind of cognitive input is an appropriate and very natural response. Wouldn't you? Why? Because in a split second, our hearts and minds internalize the fact that these sustained horrible injuries were life altering. And the compassionate humanness within us felt immediate empathy toward our fellow humans, probably without knowing it, causing us to instantly realize that if that happened to us, we'd be in a world of pain for an extended period of time. So the lesson here is an immediate and appropriate response to a very disturbing event. Although it's an entirely different kind of situation, there is another disturbing event that has happened and is happening that is demanding and has demanded an immediate and appropriate response for over a century. In fact, if such an appropriate response had happened 100 years ago, our country and the world would be in a much better, more peaceful situation and literally millions of lives could have been spared. This event has affected and is affecting everyone every single day of their lives, whether they know it or not. And it's affecting our lives for the worse. And while not immediately as shocking and cringeworthy to the general public as the snapping limb of a human being, the far reaching results of this event are much more horrific than you can possibly imagine. It was the creation and formation of the banking cartel known as the Federal Reserve. Here's a quick rundown. The Federal Reserve, which is neither a federal government agency, nor do they have available reserves, says on their website that it was, quote, created by Congress to provide the nation with a safer, more flexible, and more stable monetary and financial system. The Federal Reserve was created on December 23rd, 1913, when President Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law, end quote. Now, that sounds really nice of them to do, doesn't it? Sounds like they care about us and want us to have a stable economy and reliable money. Money that works for us. Yes, it's true, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law on December 23rd, 1913, but it was craftily done while most congressmen were home with their families 
enjoying the Christmas holiday. The planned creation of the Fed actually happened in a secret meeting in November 1910 when six men, including Nelson Aldrich, Frank Vanderlip, and Paul Warburg, met at J.P. Morgan's Jekyll Island Club off the coast of Georgia. They met specifically to write a plan to reform and take over the nation's banking system. The meeting and its purpose were closely guarded secrets and the participants did not admit that the meeting occurred until the 1930s. Mayor Amschel Rothschilds is said to have written, quote, give me control over a nation's monetary system and I care not who makes its laws. And that's exactly what happened with the passing of the Federal Reserve Act. A massive transfer of wealth and power went to a few elite bankers. The Federal Reserve and their paper currency, which bears their name, is as shockingly unlawful as it is immoral. In many respects, it's much more shocking than the videos that made you cringe a minute ago. Why is it immoral? Because in creating paper currency out of thin air that isn't backed by precious metals, as specifically noted in Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, which reads, No state shall coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver a tender in payment of debts. In creating unbacked paper currency, they are creating a note of debt. If you hold a dollar in your hand, you are holding an IOU that can never be claimed. In fact, the Federal Reserve actually used to admit that the bills that they were printing weren't lawful. For example, this 1934 series $1,000 note which bears the image and name of Grover Cleveland says, This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, and is redeemable in lawful money at the United States Treasury or at any Federal Reserve Bank. Saying you can redeem this in lawful money naturally implies that this note is not lawful money. Now they've since removed that and today's bills only read, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Essentially, the Fed is a giant counterfeiting ring. Now that would be criminal for you and me, but it's legal for JP Morgan's men under the Federal Reserve Act written by the big bankers. The Fed's goal is inflating the money supply in order to have unlimited access to money for any project from welfare to warfare. In fact, without this fraudulent credit machine in place, we could not have afforded to fight in the wars we fought in since 1913, we would not have lost all those lives in all those wars, and we could not have afforded to build the bases we have today. We would have had to live within our means. Fiat currency is a dishonest, immoral money system that allows the theft of the one who holds their product, the Federal Reserve note. It's a hot potato that people would be wise to convert into food, water, ammo, guns, precious metals, cryptocurrencies, or property while they still can. Otherwise, inflation will steal your wealth. Without this hidden tax called inflation, the government would have to tax citizens openly rather than by stealth. And this would cause a revolt against the bankers who are ruining the economy and making their buddies rich. But when the bankers use inflation, the people have no one to fight with since they believe their rise in food prices and increase in their general cost of living has to do with natural market forces, which is completely bogus. Inflation destroys the dollar's purchasing power and redistributes wealth from the poorest people to the friends of the bankers. This money hydrant turns on the boom and bust cycles. Bailouts of failing industries rewards bad managers in the ruling class while destroying the wealth of the working class. And don't think for a second that politicians aren't in on the scheme. Why do you think they never go after the lead bankers? Because the bankers control both parties. No matter who you vote for, it's the elites at the Fed who control the show. Stay tuned, because I'll cover this in a minute. On August 15, 1971, the puppet named Nixon closed the gold window and decoupled the dollar from the precious metal. Since then, the dollar has lost over 98% of its purchasing power. Now, people are under the impression that the price of precious metals or food or gasoline is going up or down. In reality, it's the unstable price of the dollar that's rising or falling. Since the 1970s, the only thing that's kept the dollar afloat is the brute force of the United States military and the soon-to-collapse petrodollar system. In this system, other countries are required to purchase dollars from the U.S. so those countries can, in turn, purchase oil to keep their economies going. No dollars, no oil. No oil, no thriving economy. 
This dollars for oil program has worked out very well for America, but not so well for other countries. And countries who have tried to move away from the dollar were invaded by US troops and dollar supremacy was restored. If you doubt this, look into Iraq under Hussein where he abandoned the dollar to buy oil with euros or Libya under Gaddafi who planned to end dollar dependency and move to the gold dinar. Both men ended up dead very soon after challenging the dollar. Whether you realize it or not, that dollar in your pocket is a ticking time bomb. When its value goes to zero, as all currencies have, those who hold those dollars will immediately lose everything they've worked so hard to save. Learn a lesson from the Weimar Republic, where their currency was worthless enough to use as wallpaper, children's toys, or heating fuel, or the more recent example in Zimbabwe in 2008. Things got so bad over there, they had to start issuing $100 trillion Zimbabwe notes. Before abandoning their currency altogether, that South African nation was plagued with a 500 billion percent inflation rate. How shocking and traumatic would that be? When nations get sick enough of the petrodollar arrangement and all those worthless bills start flooding back into our country because nobody wants them, you will not be wanting to hold on to a single Federal Reserve note. And before I end this video, there are two additional things you should know about the Federal Reserve. The first thing is they don't believe that gold is money. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, it's if it has been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. This is an absolute lie. As we know, gold is a steadfast and consistent store of value and has been for the past several thousand years. Secondly, to wrap up the theme of coming to the realization of something shocking that challenges a person's worldview and demands an immediate and appropriate response, check out who's really in control of this nation. Is it Congress? Is it the President? How about the judges? Here, let's let former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan tell you who calls the shots and lays down the law. What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. So remember that the next time you're tempted with the harebrained idea to enter a voting booth for a federal election. Doesn't matter who you vote for. The Fed holds all the power and no one can tell them what to do. If that doesn't shock you, nothing will. Guys, share this with people in the military and law enforcement since they're the ones bankers use to implement and enforce their policies. We're definitely going to need them on our side to win this. Without enforcers, the bankers can't carry out their plans. And you guys who are involved in law enforcement and the military, you guys are being stolen from through the inflation tax Ponzi scheme just like we are. And these criminals are not only stealing from you, they're sending you out on their battlefields to fight in wars they funded to take away the individual liberties of your fellow human beings across the planet. I urge you guys as a fellow human being to take a look at these things and wake up. Kissinger made it very clear that he sees you guys as dumb dogs to be used as pawns for foreign policy. If you guys got something out of this video, leave your thoughts for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with others. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe and notification button and you'll be alerted when I upload new videos. Today's featured shirts are protecting and serving the crap out of you, taxation is legalized theft, and critical thinking in progress. Please stand by. Your $5 off promo code is in a link in the description for you for every shirt in the store. And don't forget to leave your thoughts for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Yes, the next trash, Save the